<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Focus TV. This is the 150th episode. God dang. Man, I don't, I, and y'all know I don't keep track, so I have no idea until the flyer comes out. Right. That's what I was like, God dang. Yeah. yeah. So Cardell was like, you know, it's episode 150. I want to be like, clearly, you know, I don't keep track of these things. But they all just flow. Man, got here quick, so. Shout out to you guys. Uh, shout out to Studio 202. Obviously, without them, this is nothing. Thanks for having us for 150 episodes. Putting, <laughs> thank you, Roddy, putting up with us every Tuesday. Man, it's a whole lot. Ron, you too, putting up with us. So, all right, we got to take me a while here. Cardell Deli and Wilson Tarbay Jr. So much to talk about this evening. Uh, man, we, gonna, we got some high school basketball, college basketball, of course. We got Rapid Fire, 9450 Breakdown. I got Ray calling in from College Park. Should be a lot. But before we get everything going, just real quick, we're going to address this whole thing that happened on, I believe, Saturday evening. It was. Um, and just like that, we're not. it's not going to take us a long time to talk about it either. Um, <laughs> just like I'm... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Sorry, like my that. petty starting too early. Oh, no. I mean, this is worth the petty because I was sitting there like, I'm not going to talk about how I watch it for free. But again, um, I feel bad for anybody that, yeah. It's ways. <laughs> Shout out to the good folks on the good old wide open internet. We, yeah. we appreciate you. Uh, man, what, what you do does not go unnoticed. It does not. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I was one of those folks that came out of pocket, boy, I'd be upset. Uh, what did y'all think about that, man? Um, Octavian and Cardell? Um, man, it, it, was, it was a clinic. I mean, uh, all the excuses. The part that irritates me now after the fight with Wilder is just the excuses. I hate excuses on any level. But... My costume was too heavy. <laughs> like, no, I forgot what the meme said. It was like, nobody told you to come out there dressed like something. I can't remember what it Black was. Panther. but okay. Yeah, like Black Panther or somebody like with the lights and the eyes. Like, come on. And so you mean to tell me you ain't tried this outfit on before you came out on the ring and ain't realized that 45 pounds for an outfit might be a little bit too heavy? You know, I don't understand it. I, I can't deal with the excuses. Um, because it was just, like I said, a straight up clinic. Like I was surprised it lasted as long as it did, to be honest. Um, I know he is, uh, Wilder is saying that he feels like his corner shouldn't have thrown in the towel. <laughs> uh, he should thank his, his training staff, uh, because he, it, it was just bad. Like, and I feel like the narrative that some people talked about before the, the uh, fight even started was, you know, Fury basically in the first fight outboxed him. It's just that Wilder's power is so substantial that he can hit you with a one hitter quitter and it could be over. And you can tell that Fury learned a lot from the first fight and that he went back to his camp and he made a change and he wasn't playing from the beginning. And it was just, it was to me, it was just like a clear cut. Um, I feel like even if it had gone 12 rounds, you know, if, if, if they didn't throw in the towel, I just feel like when your ear is profusely bleeding, con like nonstop, like there's an issue, <laughs> like his ear was bleeding for majority of the fight. And I feel like his health as I feel like his, his uh, corner felt as well should supersede anything that happened. So I am glad that they threw in the, the towel. Um, I'm interested because apparently there was a clause in the agreement that there is a rematch clause. So apparently Wilder um, is deciding to activate that and apparently looking to have another rematch of this fight sometime later this year, I've heard, or from what I've read. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know why, you know, his pride and his ego and, and he doesn't want to take the L, but it, it was an L. It, it was a clear cut L. And I yeah, it was just bad. <laughs> I mean, that's why they call it the sweet science. You know, you, you saw the difference between being a knockout artist and, and a real all-around boxer. Uh, it's similar to being an athletic player playing a basketball, but you have no skill. You're going to get exposed eventually, no matter how physically advanced you are. It's only a matter of time. Um, you know, what that, that was my thing with Wilder and why I picked him. You know what I'm saying? And, um picked up some nice piece of change from a lot of people because of it. A lot of people get caught up in the hype and, you know, the surface and, you know, all the bravado and all that, man. But you got to look deeper into the box score behind that. And what has Deontay Wilder, truth be told, he was he got out boxed by Ortiz in the last fight. He just knocked him out. That's his 
only weapon. I'm going to try to knock you out. What are you going to do when somebody outboxes you and you can't knock them out? And the thing that Fury did that was great, he rushed him. He stayed on the inside, which is dangerous, but he got on the inside of him where he kept the pressure on him by staying inside where Wilder couldn't plant and try to knock him out. He was always he was backing up, you know, trying to get comfortable so he could take a shot because he don't have a lot of skills. You know, there's a lot of ways you can knock people out. You can knock him out with uppercuts, hooks, and stuff like that. Now, his main knockout punch is the plant and throw a jab or a wild hook. But you can't do that when somebody's up and you tag you and on top of that, he's feeling Fury hit him. So uh, and and so that he had him on the ropes, then they find it and Fury knocked him down and his legs were shot after that. He was he was he was done. So his corner tried to let him fight himself out of it because this happened and you know, boxing. I remember when Floyd got rocked by Shane Mosley back in yeah. the day. I mean a few years ago in the first round. But Floyd was smart. He just ran. <laughs> he ran for his life till he got his legs back yep. on him. Then he made Shane pay. You know what I'm saying? So, but but Wilder didn't do that. Wilder kept trying to fight and take more punishment, mm-hmm. which kept his legs wildly in his, you know, room spinning. He was off mountains. The equilibrium just all out of out of whack. But basically, you know, Tyson Fury just just outboxed. It was easy, like she said. It was just a clinic. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was just textbook, and people were shocked. Like, man, how do you do? How did you lose and stuff? Like, that that's. That <laughs> we've seen this throughout history. Don't yes. like do people watch boxing all day involved? What, what is wrong with people? They, you, they you can't just watch ESPN and, th- and just go off what everybody say. And, and about the cut, they said it wasn't even um, nothing really damaging with his ear. He just got hit. It was just a regular cut in his ear. Oh, okay. So it wasn't that's good to se- hear though. Severe. Yeah, it was just a bad cut. Because I was like, that it will not. <laughs> Oh, exactly. Because so, I know they were talking about his, his eardrum possibly being busted or whatever. But. Yeah, and you can go to the facts. Like I said, in the first fight, Fury did the same thing. He just got knocked down, and that's what saved him. And they threw it in a draw, and obviously boxing with the money, they wanted a rematch and all that. So Fury got serious. He changed his um, – he ain't have his father in his corner. He got Emmanuel Stewart's Stu- Stu- protege to teach him. Uh, this, like I said, the sweet science, Man. and it was easy. They said he, he gained a lot of weight too. Yeah, Because Wilder is a bully. Mm-hmm. So just like Foreman and Ali, <laughs> Ali was the more he was the better boxer. For Foreman, could be, he could box better than Wilder, but he was a bully back then. He just wanted to bully you, and knock you out, like he did Joe Frazier. So what happens when the the bullies give you everything you got and ain't nothing working? They they have nothing to go to. They it's out of it, it, they're uncomfortable. <clears throat> they don't know they have nothing. To, they're done. Mm-hmm. They tap out, and then they can go in the corner and, and fold up. And that's what they used to doing to other people. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened here. You know, he couldn't do that. And, and I think Fury got him by a couple of inches and and had him by a few. Um, I think he outweighed him as well. Yep. And then in a fight, he yeah, outweighed him. He was like 273 I mean, to like yeah, 230. 82 to 34. Out through Wilder. He was the more active fighter, 267, 141. And he was a more accurate puncher. He landed 30% of his, his punches compared to Wilder, who only landed 24%. Um, and then Fury landed 58 power punches, which is supposed to be a, a category that Wilder dominates. He dominated in every aspect. It was nothing. I mean, and his corner did the right thing. Why am I let you just get beat down and then you're no good no more as a fighter? Yeah. And then even long term, you end up being one of these fighters mm-hmm. can't speak, can't walk. Motor skills are just done just for your pride. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like you got out class and you need to really go back in the lab. I understand you try, your pride in a way. You know, you try to get that rematch clause before he sets something up with Joshua. Then it's gonna be even harder to get to him, but man, you better get in the gym and learn how to box. Man, like the craziest part about that, like you both said, is we really, we literally watched somebody who couldn't throw his right hand for however many rounds that fight went. Like he had to load up and literally wait for the perfect moment to unleash it, and Tyson took that away because he crowded him. Like mm-hmm. you said, please go learn how to box. Is there, it's that simple. Learn how to box. If you know how to box, you be able to get your right hand off. Problem is like. It literally sits and waits and waits and waits. And if the opportunity owns up, opens up, like you said, it's done. And he didn't but, let him get any rest. Mm-mm. Even when they were, when they grappled, lean Tyson on leaning on him, hitting him still. Even when you when he, yep. normally you get a rest, he ain't allow him to have a rest. And that was the biggest thing. And like you said, if, if you're more of a boxer, you're comfortable in that, those situations. Mm-hmm. Why are you looking uncomfortable the entire evening? Mm-hmm. Like you said, when, when Shane rocked Floyd, yeah, Floyd running, whatever, yeah. He he did what he had to do to, to avoid. A, to, he did what he had to do to survive till he got his legs. Like you he, said, he, when he got his legs, things got real. For but the next <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> what we saw, Wilder kept going towards the work. Prior. Boy, you should have stopped. And like you said, 
I wouldn't even exercise the rematch right now. I would literally take, like, maybe if it takes 12 months, you have to find a way where you can use your right hand outside of it being a kill shot. You have to. You literally, you fought one-handed. And credit to Fury and his team for the game plan. He executed it flawlessly. Yep. And that's what a lot of OG yeah. boxers, they've been waiting to say about Wilder, but, they, but these days you can't say Look, the real because you you're a hater. You can say it so, now. <laughs> Mike Tyson said it, he said it years ago. He said, man, boxing, man, ain't about all that. He, man, he said, man, this is one sport. If you don't know your stuff, you're going to mm-hmm. get hurt. You're going to get beat down. And he knows. Like, I, Look, when he was with Cus before Cus died, he was focused. He was on his way to catching Ali, greatest fighter ever. Like, it, it was nothing. We, we we still haven't seen nothing like Tyson. Mm-mm. But when Cus died and he got with the Vultures and Don King, and then he started <laughs> becoming more like how wild it was. You saw what happened. Buster yep. Douglas and Holyfield, and he knocked out some journeymen or whatever. But then, boom, boom, boom. And, and our people got to stop drinking the Kool Aid just because they're one of our own, man. Like oh, I get it. Oh uh, yeah, I heard that. Black History Month was ruined, apparently. <laughs> Look, man, I get it. <laughs> but state the facts, man. If this is a superior fighter, and, and a lot of it has to do with Fury's appearance. You look at this dude, you be like, come on, man. You ain't. And maybe his you don't shape, but he was in shape. But, but you know what the other thing is? I don't. I don't care about the fact and shape. If you caught that, you caught his hands, right? You caught that L, right? So clearly, he don't need to be in what y'all think shape. To give whoever it is that work. But it's people that lack perspective. We talk uh, about all the time with Barry. And it, it was just flawless. It was flawless execution. We were watching a child get hand, like, like from a boxing standpoint. He's a, a child he's a, getting a woman. He's a toddler. <laughs> he was a toddler that just got spanked. Like, that was literally it. And I he love did something Andre wrong. Wood, one of my favorite fighters. Yeah. They was asking him post game when he was going to the airport. And then they was asking him about uh, do you think, uh, you know, the costume and everything that went into the pregame fight? And he said, oh, no, we ain't going to do that. <laughs> that. No, no excuses. He's just like, look, look. He he accepted all the praise when he was knocking people mm-hmm. out. He said, you gotta take that. You gotta accept, you it's gotta take simple. the criticism. You take the L, dog. Mm-hmm. He said that's part of it, man. This is when you show you a true champion. Then I then Ali get rocked by uh, Frazier. Mm-hmm. He got up and fought, but he lost. But he redeemed himself and got two more wins off of him, even though they were all out wars. Then he be former so to solidify. All right, when he said I'm the greatest, he solidified that. So you gotta. That's that's this. He's being tested. Joshua got tested. He got punished by, by Ortiz, man. Yeah. But he came back one a belt. So now the real fight is Fury and Joshua. We mm-hmm. got who's gonna be the you know, the overall champion? Yeah. And then for meanwhile, for Wilder, you better go. You better go get sharp. You gotta get sharp. Yeah, take this time like, to get yeah, sharp. Dog. Get sharp because you are not sharp, sir. You need a rest though. Because it's just gonna be more milk. the same. Yeah. You hop in there thinking you gonna try to knock and, him out. And again. that's the thing. We saw the game. I'm not to cut you off. I'm sorry, but we saw the game plan executed this well. Mm-hmm. That's it. This is the book on you, sir. Until you change it, this is it. Ain't nothing gonna change. And then when you the, you the so called boogeyman and you okay. get beat like that, oh, you're not a boogeyman no more. Yeah, people not <laughs> shut people. Now Ortiz, hey, look, hey, what's up? You walk, hey, look, you walk in the ring now, <laughs> chest a little, chest out a little bit further, hey. some more juice in your step because you like, oh, if that right hand don't catch me, I'm good. Exactly. And that's literally where we at right now. But we are gonna see. All right, on the high school basketball, Cardell. Now we gonna get into the PG County Championships. Uh huh. Let's boogie. Man. Uh-oh. Not to be bad. I know, man. It kind of scared nah, me. You got to bear with me. It's a lot of championships going. On. Okay. It's a lot of championships going on. Right, I'm gonna start with the high school championships. Okay. Um, first of all, congrats to Mount St. Joseph. Um, they knocked off St. Francis for the second time this season to win the MIAA championship. Wow. 74-63, senior four. <clears throat> uh, Emmanuel Adokpai. I hope I ain't butchered his last name. Posted a team high 21 points. My senior guard and GW commit. Uh, Tyler Brailsford. He finished with 16 points. Uh, Ace Baldwin. VCU commit. Led St. Francis with the game high 25 points. Also, congrats to St. Andrews for winning a MAC championship. Uh, they defeated Sidwell Friends 50 to 42. Bishop McNamara girls defeated Paul the Six girls 43 to 40. Captured their first WCSC championship since 08. Uh, and, won- and salute to Dematha for winning their 41st WCSC championship uh, 70 56 over Paul the Six. It's their second in the last three years. Uh, it was also head coach Mike Jones 500 victory. Uh, it's, a, it's just a fitting way for, you know, seniors, uh, you know, Hunter Dickinson mm-hmm. and Earl Timberlake to go out and get ready for college. They go out champs in the WCAC. And also, you know, it's fitting. Morgan Wooten died, you mm-hmm. know, recently. So it's just fitting that everything lined up that way and they got it done. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big win for, you know, the DeMatha family, the DeMatha circle and whatnot. And, you know, we have some more championships coming up tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wise is the PG County Championship on the girls' side, Oxen Hill. Uh, they take on Flowers at 5 p.m. Uh, key players from Flowers are senior guard and Howard Commit, Kanaya Harris, and 6'1 junior LaShawna Robinson. Uh, 
Flowers coming to Wednesday matchup with a record of 20 and 1. Uh, Oxen Hills led by Howard Kamara, Naya Wilson. Uh, we've talked about her plenty on the show. Uh, she's recently scored over 1,000 points in just three seasons on varsity in her career. Uh, Senna and Shara Beckett and Senior Wing Crystal Material provide depth inside and out. Uh, get there early. It's going to be very packed. Like I mean, if you've been a wise, it's, a, it's probably the biggest gym in PG County. Probably. High school, yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be packed. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be standing room only. That's just, just how it go. And on the boys' side, Eleanor Roosevelt been covering them. Uh, shout out to Roosevelt. They came in on the show recently as guests. Mm-hmm. They did a great job. They're coming in at 18-2 undefeated in PG County play. Uh, they take on Oxen Hill High School. They come, Oxen Hill's coming in 20-2. and two. They're 13-2 and two in conference play. They will follow them, the girls' game at Wise at 7 p.m. Uh, obviously, I, I've repeated many times, Eleanor Roosevelt is the reigning Maryland 4A state champs. They're led by our seniors, Quinn, Quinn Mincy, Mount St. Mary's commit. Um, Joe Jamel McNair, Lumi Lewis, and guard Jahari Simon. Austin Hill is led by Player of the Year and George Mason commit Ronald Polite and Malik Holland, an explosive scorer who recently posted 41 points earlier this season against Crossland, thanks to 12 three pointers. Um, yeah, uh, another standout, Mike Sumner uh, for Austin Hill. He's been out since early February with the concussion. Prayers up to him. It, you know, it would be even a different matchup if he was playing. Um, no one's really sure, but I doubt it. You can't risk concussion for a young player, man. You got to right. make sure you get healthy. So prayers up for him. Uh, he's talented in his own right, so it should be a fun night tomorrow, and I will be on hand to cover both. Uh, no so, surprise in the gym, huh? <laughs> Question, so good. so Austin Hill boys and girls? Yeah, they both made it. I ain't surprised. <laughs> Sound like some old, what, you, some old like, Grand Park rivalry stuff coming up out of you. I so, uh, when you, you know talk ab- was about to. <laughs> when you talk <laughs> about county about championship to. games in, in PG County, like when I was in high school, that's when they first really started doing them. Yeah, it used right. to just be four A, three A, two A. Well, four A, then in three A, two A, one A, and it was just like whoever had the best record. Okay, you're the champion or whatever. It, it, they just they recently then when I was in high school started actually having games. And I remember our very first one, it was us versus Oxen Hill and then Oxen Hill boys versus somebody else. And then, so I always think it's kind of cool when both, like when one school has both their boys and their girls in yes, it. Cause we did, we did it my senior year was, it was us and our boys that got to go. So that, that to me, that always just shows like that's a powerhouse. Like they, yeah. they, they work hard. Cause a lot of times the teams, they, they play off of each other. You know, like I know we used to always go back and forth with our boys. like. All right, if we win, y'all got to win. Like, right. y'all can't lose and we win. And, like, we got to both go together. So, I just think it's kind of cool. It, it applies, man. It's just <laughs> it's going on at Maryland right now. Yeah. I wish I could say it's going on for our pro teams, but that's not the same. I'm, I'm <laughs> not going to be chill out. <laughs> the same. It, be a it wasn't me with the petty. It wasn't, but it's going to be a while for, hey, uh, for the pro level. But shout out to you, uh, you know, the one that did get it done. Um, You had anything else, Pastor? No. I, All right, so, I, I just got one quick shout out uh, for high school. I want to shout out uh, the homie Lee Tao over at mm-hmm. Lee High School. Um, she took over the varsity basketball program in 2017. Again, when I was in high school, Lee was trash. I remember just one of them that schools, when like, they, they came. Always, that was a given W. <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and pencil that one in on the schedule. <laughs> go ahead and just focus on what you was doing the rest of the week. Uh, <laughs> this year, for the first time since 2008, the team had a winning record. That's and sad. I know, like, you know, 12 and 10 on the outside, you'd be like, it's not that big of a deal. But if you won four games in two years... There's progression, yeah, change. man. Exactly, especially when, from a talent standpoint, it's not like you got the top of the top. Yeah. Coaching has to be done, and you know we've done a, we've been consistent on this program of giving people credit when they've gone in and changed the culture anywhere. So I want to give her credit for that. Um, again, they finished the regular season twelve and ten. They got to the second round of districts. They fell, um, but they did qualify to play in the first round of regionals. Um, so again, just want to give some love to Coach Lee and the Lady Lancers uh, for getting it turned around. Again, four wins in two years, so they're like four and thirty-two. And she just had a baby, not that and long ago. And she just had a baby. Um, <laughs> Out here doing gym. Yeah. Out here doing what she got to do. That's what's up. So again, shout out to Lee and the Lady Lancers. Um, we look forward to continued progression in her program. You know, hopefully this is the beginning of getting things on track versus you know things being the status quo at Lee, because um, that's what we don't want is any backslide. Just continue to progress. Right. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. Coming out of the break, you're going to check out some highlights. Cardell, tell them what, what, the, what game, the highlights that game's coming from. I know it's a game you talked about last week. Yeah, CCBC, Essex, and uh, Lackawanna College, both nationally ranked Maryland Jugo, well, not Maryland Jugo, nationally ranked Jugo programs, uh, two of the top in the top 25 in Division Two in the country. 
Uh, they went at it last week, so y'all going to get to see the highlights, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it when we come back. All right, and then after that, we're in the college basketball segment. Senior night in College Park. Going to hear from Ray. He's going to call in. Then we're going get, to uh, get the latest on the A-10 because it's about to get real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is just not another way to say it. You're watching the Focus TV. Again, our 150th episode. Shout out to everybody here that makes everything go on. And then to you, the viewers, we truly appreciate you guys. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Focus TV. Um, man, I was even 50. I'm stuck yeah. on the number right now. Yeah. I, it did not feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just know every Tuesday you come here and knock stuff out. I don't yeah. know anything else. All right, but Cardell, talk about the, the game that we just saw. Um, Coming back from break. You know, CCC, CCBC Essex, they were ranked 12th in the, in the country coming into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat the 21st ranked team in the country, 85-71 Lackawanna College. Uh, it was a statement victory. Uh, talking to head coach Mike Sini after the game, he said they have played three of last year's Final Four participants and beat all three of them. So that's a statement sending like, that's yeah, we coming for that chip, season. coming yep. for the national championship. Gotcha. Oh, for sure. Um, we just, I'm going to just keep it real, man. Uh, Essex had Maya Moye, and the other team did, you know. Uh, Sometimes life is that simple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Three-time defender, Marilyn Jugo, women's basketball player of the month. Uh, she finished with a game high, 29 points, 9 to 16 shooting. Uh, she was dominant from the opening tip. You see in the highlights, she went at him. She put her foot on her neck, and she ain't let up. Uh, it was just as simple as that. Uh, freshman Trinity Horton, uh, she posted 17 points. Uh, which included hitting 5 or 13 from 3 for Essex. And sophomore uh, Aislinn Flynn finished with 10 points into her rebounds. A nice double-double. Lackawanna was led by guard Kyla Smith. She, she posted 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. And point guard Sierra Lloyd finished with 8 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, and 4 steals. Um, the thing that impressed me about this victory was, you know, Essex get a lot of the attention because they're offense. And, you know, they average like 93 games. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Senior always has an explosive offense at his thought. Uh, you know, he says he's influenced by Mike D'Antoni, and you know, I joke with him like that might not be a good thing to talk about, but you know, <laughs> you know, I joke with him, but you know, offensively, I understand, man. You know, he always has explosive offenses, and you can overwhelm teams when you right. do just like a barrage of just buckets. You know, like man, how are we gonna keep up with this? Yep. So I get it, ball movement, jumper, shots, shot making, it, it can overwhelm you. But in this game, their defense is is what you know wow me because they came with it with their usual barrage of offense against one of the better defensive teams in the entire country. Like I said, coming in, they were holding a team to an average of 28 points yeah. per game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> which is ridiculous <laughs> for for any level, let alone a, a college level. But, you know, Essex defense was better than theirs. Uh, they held Lackawanna to 35 first half points. And they turned Lackawanna over 29 times for the game. Oh, scored yeah. 16 points off of that. So they came to play in every facet. And that's why they won the game uh, I got to give Lackawanna some credit. They didn't fold. They showed that it's the reason why they were in the Final Four ranked nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, it was times when when Exes get on the run, especially for senior teams in the past, when they get on the run, it's like the Warriors third quarter run with KD. They just they take you out. It's yeah. over. And then they sitting and um, he's sitting the starters and letting you know get the girls that don't get a lot of playing time play. But it wasn't the case. When it looked like they was about to separate, Lackawanna would come back with a run and keep it a game or whatnot. So you got to give them credit. They definitely showed some uh, championship grit. But at the end of the day, Essex was just too much uh, led by Moye. Uh, the night's home finale is tomorrow. Uh, they play against the College of Southern Maryland at 6 p.m. And then their season finale is February 28th at Hagerstown Community College. All right. And shout out to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Especially handling things on the defensive end when you're a great offensive team. Hey, hey, you do both, it's hard to win. It's hard to beat. I heard that. It's a rumor. Sometimes it helps you win things. <laughs> what? Well, really? Uh, you know, it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't always been proven. All right. So, Raymond, what's going on, sir? Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? What's up, man? Man, we're good, man. You sound like you're in a hostile environment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, Maryland, they up by 12 right now. Um, they started slow. Uh, Produced the early lead, but Brenda went ahead and let the dogs off the leash. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, My girl Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they they turned up that defensive pressure, um, and yeah, they just in complete control of the game right now. Uh, Stephanie Jones leading all scores with twelve points. She also got four rebounds. Uh, it's a nice atmosphere here for senior night. Uh, Tiana Hawkins in the building. Uh, she brought a nice little piece of hardware with her too. The, uh, sure. the WNBA championship trophy. It's not a bad She's, thing um, to walk around with. Yeah, not, 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 <laughs> a, not, a, not, a, not a bad thing to I brandish around man. here. A little, little championship flex. <laughs> oh, right, right. Flex, flex on. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Maryland, they just, they're just swarming for do right now with their defense. You know, they, they, um, they went in and threw on a three-quarter school press, and Purdue just, they, they can't handle it. Um, their ball handlers are looking shaky. Um they were getting the lat inside uh, to begin the game, but Shakira Austin came in off the bench and negated all that. So 
and it looked like it's about to be business as usual for the Terps. All right, so uh, you foresee them going ahead and com completing this task and moving to 13 consecutive wins? Yeah, it looks like it. And um, and they, if they win tonight, which it looks like they're going to, and Northwestern loses, they'll be um, in sole possession of first place in the Big Ten. So they um, they got some added uh, added fire tonight to, uh, to go ahead and get this done. Yeah, and it's never a bad time, no matter the sport, to be peaking at this time of the year. Especially in college exactly. basketball, sure. um, like you know, we talk about the Izzo's teams in the past, yeah. some of the Calhoun teams in the past. Like you start slow and people get, oh my God, they get out of whack. And this is why I've been excited about this Maryland team. We talked every week. It's been a slow process, but when they got going, yeah, they going. Yeah, like especially with the defense, we were just talking about. We have a team that can score because people are waiting around for the offense to kick in. And uh, how's the offense look tonight? Um, it's, it's looking good. They are, they're working the mid-range. Uh, as we speak, Shakira Austin just scored on a nice move inside. Uh, they're moving the ball well. They hit a couple threes. You know, they're looking like a well-oiled machine. And um, they looks like they're really starting to find themselves, like you said, at the perfect time going into uh, conference tournaments and, of course, uh, the big dance. So, you know, they, they look like they're being in pretty good shape. And with this squad, they definitely going to make some noise in March. All right, man. Thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of tonight's game. Appreciate you calling in from the field. All right, thank you. All right, so that was Raymond calling in from College Park. All right, get, let's get to this eight ten, man. Yeah. Let's, let's get to this. Okay, um, I'm gonna start with GW. Just kind of give a rundown, and I'm gonna, once I get the rundown, you understand why the standings are important, especially going into the eight ten tournament in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start with the men's side. Uh, GW men's fell to LaSalle seventy two sixty two. And in their two-game winning streak, uh, GW found itself down by as many as 18 points late in the first half. Uh, but they battled back to take the lead, 45-44, at the 13-42 you know, mark at the, in the second half, thanks to a 14-point surge from Junior Garmacel Jack to begin the second half. Um, he, he just exploded. He went off, um, scored 14 straight points. They came back and got the lead. But LaSalle responded with the 8-0 run to, again, take a 52-45 lead at the 12-12 mark and wouldn't relinquish the lead again. Uh, coming into the contest, GW LaSalle ranked fourth and second in defending the three, respectively. You have both ranked in the top five in the A-10 conference in three-point attempts. So, obviously, three-point shooting uh, went a long ways towards a victory in this in this particular game. But LaSalle won the battle. Uh, they shot 53% from three-point range and held GW to 30%. Uh, GW guards, Maceo Jack, and Armel Potter both finished with 19 points. LaSalle was led by local product reserve guard Sharif Kenny. He played at Bishop O'Connell, then Rock Creek before transferring up to Brewster, then went out to Chicago or high school, um, finished up there. Now he's at LaSalle. Uh, he finished with 13 points, running point, which was uh, very impressive. Uh, in high school, he was a score, shoot first type of guy, but I saw a lot of poise and, you know, just maturity in this game. That I was like, all right, he got it along with this. Obviously, confidence in his shot making and scoring ability. Uh, fellow, uh, fellow Mitch made David Beatty score 10 points. Backcourt made my fault. David Beatty scored 10 points and forward Ed Crowswell scored 12 points. GW has four games remaining and they will host third place Richmond tomorrow at 7 p.m. And on the women's side, GW took down 17 to 10 Duquesne, 72 67 on Saturday night. Uh, the Colonials were led by grad student Alexandra Mile. 27 points on 10 of 15 shooting, which is a career high, and included 12 points in the third quarter. It's the most points scored in the two seasons from a GW player. Uh, Red Shirt freshman Mayowa Tyro posted a career high 16 points and grabbed 16, six rebounds. GW simply, you know, they torched Duquesne. Uh, they shot 52% from the field, dished out the season best 21 assists, and hit 19 to 23 from the charity stripe, including 12 or 14 in the fourth quarter. When you shoot that way in the fourth quarter from the line, it's just hard for you to come back in and win. Uh, next up for GW Women's is 13-13 Rhode Island, which they are hosting right now as we speak. Okay, uh, the reason why the loss was so important for GW, uh, it kind of dictates their – obviously it dictates their seeding going in, but it dictates that they're going to get a buyer. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now they are in – they're in ninth place still, so – with that being said, if they remain there, they will play, instead of playing on the opening day Wednesday, they will play on Thursday. Gotcha. Uh, more rest is always good at this time mm -hmm. of the year. You banged up, you get more time, and it gives you time to scout your opponent a little bit better. Right. So you kind of want to stay in that range. 
Uh, if they keep losing, they can easily drop and be playing on the first day, which is not ideal because then it's very hard to try to make a run. It's hard to win five days in a row and try to win a conference tournament. And at the end of the day, we all know everyone's tasting, you know, Dayton. You know, yeah. they got a for sure lottery <laughs> pick and Obi Toppin, yeah. but it's not just him. Point guard Jalen Crutcher, he, he's on his way. He's a monster and it's on right. Rhode Island's tough. Uh, they going to see what Richmond is all about tomorrow. Uh, St. Bonaventure, they actually, I think they beat them early. No, they lost to them um, early. To, no, they split early, um, They split both games. Okay. Okay, so one, Bonaventure beat them down here, and I think GW went up there and beat them up there. And, and so it's going to be tough on the men's side. So, you know, it'd be wise to just finish out strong, get some momentum going in the 18th tournament, and then use that buy to your advantage. And on the women's side, you know, GW isn't, you know, they slightly worse but kind of the same. Uh, they're in tenth place, so they're kind of in the second day as well. If they keep losing, like yeah. today, I got to check the score. If they keep losing, they'll be playing on the first day. Like I said, they need buys. You know, what I'm saying just to avoid that wear and tear and get more prepared to try to make a run. Because at this point, without that, they won't be playing in any postseason tournaments after this. So, so uh, both teams need to win the conference tournament. Yes, pretty much to get that bid. Yes, uh, okay. George Washington. <laughs> Uh, are, is where well, the women's is twelve and fifteen. Got you. And the fellas are twelve and fifteen. Yeah, so, so. you need the automatic bids. And That's no other it. Way. And you yep. you're not going on American one, America run. You gotta go winning five, five days yeah, straight. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. NBA don't play that type of schedule. Though. Oh, that five games, five days, crazy. Yes, sir. <laughs> crazy. Um. All right. So we're moving on. Mm -hmm. Nine four fifty. Jamal Haywood, he's he's about to catch up to us. <laughs> to the 150, yeah. <laughs> so, you're going to say, like, we, we need to take some time and do the breakdown on a mask, but uh, he's not that far behind. Like, we're at 150, I feel like. I'm at the is this 80? Season like, two. Like, I feel like this is 80, right? <laughs> Go ahead and take a poll. Like, uh -huh. He's about to catch us. All right, but shout out to Jamal Haywood, man. This week for the 9450 breakdown, he will be breaking down different setups uh, for a hezzy jump shot. Again, Jamal Haywood's breaking down different setups for a hezzy jump shot. That's followed by our second break. When we get back, got a quick little DC United update. A couple rapid fire questions. That's going to complete tonight's show. But you're watching the Focus TV. We'll be right back. Today we're going to work on different ways to set up uh, the hezzy move, uh, footwork jump shot, whatever you want to call it. Um, we can set it over crossovers, um, hard pounds, between the legs or behind the back. So we're going to go over different options. So today, uh, we're going to start off with the crossover first. We're going to start with my right hand. So I'm just going to do a simple crossover right into that different kind of jump shot. So once I cross it over here, I kick the left foot out. Now when I kick my left foot out, I kick the knee out as well also too. So when we doing both, it sells the drive when I'm driving left. Because normally if I go to the basket, this is the motion. Crossover. Here, I kick the right foot out, kick the hand out. ways to set up uh, the hezzy move, uh, footwork jump shot, whatever you want to call it. Um, we can set it over crossovers, um, hard pounds, between the legs or behind the back. So we're going to go over different options. So today, uh, we're going to start off with the crossover first. I'm going to start with my right hand. So I'm just going to do a simple crossover, right into that different kind of jump shot. So once I cross it over here, I kick the left foot out. Now when I kick my left foot out, also too. So when we doing both, it sells the drive when I'm driving left. Because normally if I go to the basket, this is the motion. Crossover. Here, I kick the right foot out. Kick the 
Welcome back to the Focus TV, and as always, thank you very much to Jamal Hayward each and every week knocking out the 9450 breakdown. It's always very informative if you're looking to add things to your game or just sharpen some things. You don't want to be your man Wilder out here, <laughs> one dimensional, a little bit limited. The get petty yourself has, in trouble. it's just transcended to everybody. Like, hold on, <laughs> so hold up, now, hold on real quick. Y'all gonna tell me it doesn't apply? Right. You need it to does. be able to. But when was I say it, it, was it necessary? It wasn't. Was his outfit? <laughs> That's in, what makes oh, it. Oh, thank you. Was his outfit into the ring necessary? <laughs> cool. You felt it was. Wasn't well, I felt it was necessary? To <laughs> fire it's, it's okay. Shot. The petty is in the air. He needed to kill I mean, you act like it's hard, you know, for anybody in here to be like that. Anybody it's not. Nice. It's a daily struggle it's with me. It's hard for me. I'm just. I don't like being petty. Just call me Petty Betty. It's <laughs> we'll get it. Hey, look, this about to be a whole segment. Petty Betty. <laughs> petty right. Betty. Just that, write it down. It's a good idea because I have a lot of things I can be petty about. <laughs> I'm saying though, right here. Got a whole idea, a whole program. My petty this thought is, for, the, for the day. Petty Betty. This is horrible. All right, DC United update, man. I'm Finally, ready next week. preseason's come to an end. Regular season is here. I'm not a big preseason person. Um, You know, I know there's a bunch of things like you can take things from it, but I don't feel like there's super concrete things you can take from it until things go like fully live, aka the regular season, and live bullets start, uh, you know, flying as they say. Um, you know, but DC United will be hosting Colorado Rapids this week. Um, one of the things that changes some of their personnel. They've kept some of their core, but some of the bigger names have now exited. Um, Wayne Rooney, Luciano Acosta are no longer here. Also gone are Lucas Rodriguez, Leonardo Hara, Quincy Amarqua, and Jalen Robinson, one of their homegrowns. Um, the black and red, as I said, kept much of his core. But some play they did add some players, which you're going to need to after you let some of those guys go. Uh -huh. uh, particularly as far as attacking go, they brought back a familiar face in Yamil Assad. Um, some of the other new additions that are familiar faces, Edison Flores. Paid a pretty penny for him. He's a designated player. Traded for Julian Gressel um, and Eric Sorga. Uh, Assad returning certainly helps kind of ease some of the uh, the issues with Paul Ariola, who suffered a season-ending injury um, mm -hmm. towards ACL. Um, so prayers and speedy recovery to him. Um, but that said, like, one of the things that hurt them a little bit, again, sorry, while they're going back, things being kind of one-dimensional and predictable, DC is attack. It was kind of like, it got to go through Lucho and Wayne. Otherwise... What are we really doing here? Yeah. Um, this year, one of the things are, yeah, you lost two guys of that class or what, that quality or whatnot, but you're bringing in more people where there's more versatility now. And anybody knows whatever sport you're playing, the, if you have various ways to attack, it's tough for a defense to hone in on things. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how the attack kind of evolves this year. Um, some of the pieces are different. going to be able to do some things with – Kamara up top that you weren't able to do with Wayne in terms of the way that you can use them and provide service to them. And this has nothing to do with either player, just being different players at different strengths um, and different skill sets uh, and different body types, size, you know, frames, whatnot, what have you. Uh, biggest thing for me that's going to be, that's going to, you know, show initially is their depth. They're not very deep right now. As you can see with the areola injury, yeah, it's good that they have a side here. But if anything happens kind of on the back end like last year, going to be kind of rocky. Um, it'd be interesting to see who, you know, makes a starting loving this week. But again, I'm not, I'm one of those people, you're not going to hear any big, you know, sweeping statements from me. So like, we're like 10 games in. All right. Wow. Just want to see how things go, see how things gel. But again, um, I'm never one that's going to be upset about spending any of my time at Audi Field. So I'll see you guys Saturday. If you're there, just, you know, tweet at us, let me know. Uh, we will be there. And that means again. You know, BC United update in the following weeks where it will be a little bit more uh, expansive. That said, rapid fire, what you got for us, sir? Got some time for a few. All right. Former Oklahoma quarterback Jalen Hurts was asked if he would change positions if asked by an NFL team. His quote was, I'm a team first guy, but I'm a quarterback. He left it at that. 
thoughts? Great answer. <laughs> uh, what they do in Family Feud? Good answer. <laughs> they know it's probably the best PC answer he could give. Like, I'm open to it, but hey, guys, I'm a quarterback. Like, I mean, I feel like that. I, I think that was just a good answer. You know, you want to not uh, like steer teams away from you, thinking that you're not willing to adapt or change. Um, but still putting out there like, hey, I like I feel like I'm a quarterback, you know. So I think it was a, a good PC answer. I'm sick of this question. I'm <laughs> sick of it every year. Um and I wanna hold the media accountable too. It's not always the teams too. Like, what made you have to ask that question, dude through for ninety five hundred yards, courtesy uh, uh Samuel Cho, I think, sharing that earlier on Twitter. Um, ninety five hundred yards, five hundred shy of ten thousand yards for his career. What are we doing? We've seen people, Mitch Trubisky, do far less in one year, and those questions weren't asked. Look at the Bears right now. Do you wish they'd select another quarterback? Probably. We didn't ask him, does he play a different position? Because I don't think he plays quarterback. And we can go down the list for so many other mediocre quarterbacks where they get pushed on us every year because they look a certain way. I'm just done with it. 9,500 yards. That's really the question. 9,500. We're just talking about in the air. Why are we doing this? Who just won the MVP? In the NFL. Lamar. Cool. Who just won a Super Bowl? My homies. Cool. Everybody loves Joe Burrow. One of the funniest things, and I'm going to bring this up every time, no matter what type of NFL career he has, guess what type of quarterback he was classified as, as coming out of high school? Runner. Dual threat. Ding, ding, ding. Are we going to ask Joe Burrow why he's not going to play a different position? We are not. Stop it. It's stupid. It's annoying. It, it's just pointless. What are we doing? And it, I feel like it's one of those things, like, honestly, right now we're asking somebody who threw for 9,500 yards. It's like a bait question. You just want them to react wrong so you can say something. Yeah. Like, like, and that's sad. Like, call that out for what it is. It's it's stupid. It so, is disrespectful. But sometimes media are mouthpiece for the yeah. team. So who knows where the agenda was. And like I said, I'm glad he was smart enough to do yeah. it. He's better than me. Yep. I wouldn't have been so PC. Y'all. I'm like, hell no. Nah. I play quarterback. That's what my expertise is. If you don't want me to play quarterback, don't draft me. And it is what it is. And you know what I'm saying? Because what's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah. Wherever I'm going to go, I'm going to ball. You know what I'm saying? Look at the current MVP. So I'm just, <laughs> like you said, I'm, I'm fed up with it. I'm just tired. And it's coward. you trying to jam, you know, I mean, I know he's a grown man, but he's a young man. You're trying mm -hmm. to jam dudes up who's on the verge of accomplishing a dream and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and, it's, and it's for no reason. For what? For what? You're not doing that to everybody across the board, so it's weak. Um, I think it's trifling, but you know, like I said, kudos to him for handling like a, a professional. Uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of getting to a point where it's just like I feel like people take professional. It's like it's like kindness for a weakness. No, they do. And sometimes you got to check people, like set that tone, like hell no, nah, don't draft me if you gonna think I'm, a, I'm not changing nothing. And I love that you brought that up because I felt like that was literally from that line of questioning. Yeah, we shouldn't be 9,500 yards, sir. We shouldn't be asking that. And then secondly, even if it's coming from all the NFL teams, dog, there's been one team who's been dominating the league for 15, 20 years. A bunch of y'all don't know what y'all doing. I don't know why y'all out here talking to people anyways. You need to maybe reevaluate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, just to be completely honest, a bunch of y'all don't like a certain type of quarterback, but a bunch of y'all got the other type of you don't do anything. Just in the league not doing anything at all. All right. Uh, next question, Oregon. Star of guard Sabrina Ionescu is the first player, man or woman, to reach 2,000 points, 1,000 assists, and 1,000 rebounds in a career. Uh, she hit the milestone on the defensive rebound, 147 main in the third quarter, uh, and a win over number three Stanford last night. My question is, where her college success translates to the WNBA? Ooh. Sorry to jam you up. No, no. That's as hot. Rapid fire. Oh, no, no. You, hey, look, you yeah, know, I'm looking at you like, look, I want to hear your answer You're not first. even giving me up. <laughs> cool. I'm fine here because I feel like this is the place where, you know, some people don't want to go. I'd rather this opportunity. Love Sabrina. Shout out to what she did. It was amazing. Um, that said, that next level is going to be interesting. And it's going to be one of those things where I don't know if she's going to be able to do exactly what she wants to do, how she was able to do it on this level, on the next level. Um, just because things... Things look different at the next level yeah. that move different at the next level. Yeah. We're in a league where there are people that are 6'4", 6'5", that are cat quick. It's different. That's all I'm going to say. It's different. And that's what's been just funneling into the league. Like the last three, four, five years, you see, we're seeing 6'4", threes, right? And some teams got three of them at the 3, 4, and 5. Uh, some teams, you know, uh, 
to bring up Maryland for a second, they got a young and Diamond Miller. She's six three, Guard. guarding point guards, and not and it's not like she has to play off because of the length. She's quick enough to move her feet with five eight five. Like that's what's being funneled to that next level right now. Um, and I think that's going to be an adjustment because we talk about it all the time. Size and length is size and length. And if people don't have counters ready to deal with that all the time, um, you know, it's going to, it's going to, it's always going to affect what you do if you don't have those counters. I think it's going to be an adjustment period. I don't think she's going to be as dominant as she was on the college level on the next level. Do I think she's going to be bad? No. Um, but I think it's going to be one heck of an adjustment period because it's different up there. I think I think the hype went into the stratosphere when they beat the USA team. Mm -hmm. But people forget that you dealing with Skylar, who basically was out for years. She's in the rhythm and an older Sue Bird. Mm -hmm. That was her matchup. So um, you can't really go by that. We covered the WNBA, so we're aware of guards that love to embarrass rookies <laughs> and love to embarrass other point guards that will get up in your ish. That's the thing about the WNBA. They allow you to defend. It ain't like the NBA. Mm -mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, one woman come to mind, uh, Sydney Colson from the Aces. Yes. She came in here during the regular season, gave the Mystics fits. I mean, she made the girl, she made the Mystics guards have to look old school magic back down, yeah. just keep turning, keep turning. They couldn't dance. She, they danced, it was gone. You feel what I'm saying? And speaking about the Mystics, they had some outstanding defenders yes. and, you know, Cloud get strapped. Powell's can strap, Ariel Atkins can strap. Yeah. Like um, they have some defenders on that on that side where it gets real. You know what I mean? So I, you know, I, they're hyping. In, they they're giving her a lot of hype, and I'm not sure because I saw someone along those lines a couple of years ago, and she it took her a while to get adjusted. And Kelsey mm -hmm. Plum, no yeah. disrespect. Um, Kelsey Plum was all world average, thirty one, yes. three thousand points Walking in her career. Up. It was ridiculous. And she came in. It was it took her a couple of years. Yeah. It took her a couple years, and she kind of figured out her game within mm -hmm. the WNBA last year. She became more of a role play, defensive player who can knock down shots. You know what I'm saying? Playing off of Cambodge and, and uh, Asia, Asia gotcha. Wilson. But, you know, when you got those two bigs back there, it makes it easier for guards yeah. to play defense because all I got to do is send you to them. You know what I'm saying? So, But she gets after it, no doubt. But I don't know. You know, I, I think – I, and it depends on what team she go to, because basically, who, who got the first pick with yeah. Dallas, New York? So she's on. She got Tina, so Maybe. that would help. Maybe. Maybe. Well, you know yeah. what I mean. But they have the number one pick, so if they draft her, which is what she's projected to be. Tina's the top mm -hmm. though, so that would help a lot. It yeah. take the load off her. But you know, can she defend at that level? And, and that's the thing. It's a lot of questions. I'm not sure about. And I hope people understand this is not hating because look, you man, people are like that. We're man, simply. Look. Breaking down pros what it's going to be. Yeah. And, 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 and we've watched it happen to heralded college stars time and time again. You get there and stuff gets real. Mm -hmm. Like, it's different. And the other thing, like you said, not only unlike the NBA, man, there's less teams. There's less spots. Yes. That's another question. Like, it's, it's a different type, but. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's a different time. And it's real fast, too, because right and, after y'all. Yeah, right, now the, the money done went up, too. I'm like, I'm, I'm not letting you beat me. Oh, it's on. Dude, you got people that were first round picks that are getting invited to teams for training camp spots. They're training camp bodies right was, now. Uh, wasn't Katie Lua All American her last year? Yes. Huh? yes. And she just got traded after rookie yeah. year after barely playing. She just she was traded. Yes. Changed. <laughs> uh, a lot has changed since the first year. She was a top five pick. And what happened? Again, what you were just talking about, people are not thinking about how somebody projects to that next level. Because at. at at Connecticut, at UConn, she rarely saw the things that looked like her. Yeah, she was on, the biggest player on the floor. On, on that the scale, side? On the scale. She was always a mismatch. But and now mismatches. you come in the game and you have to defend Emma. You have to defend Deladon. You got to defend your college teammate fees is different. You got to, now you look up Brittany Griner down there. She's not having it. No, you know, with Dewana Bonner playing the three. And then depending on who you eat, whoever, whoever you got, and it's not like there was a great handle she had or whatever. And not picking on anybody, but simply saying, like, the, the 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 college stars don't always have the greatest success in that league. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the things that, and I know a lot of people don't watch enough of the league to know. Man, it's I think it was a couple of drafts ago where there's like one player in the league from the first round. Like mm -hmm. it's real. It's so real. So shout out to her for what she's been in college, man, and hopefully one she all -time fin grace. yeah mm -hmm. one of all time greats on the collegiate level. Hopefully, hopefully she finishes things out the correct way. You know, with a championship, I'm sure Oregon would love it. But again, as far as the next level goes, man, stuff gets real. It's real up there. It is real. real in the like, matter of fact, people got mad at me last year when I thought uh, 
uh, Gustafson from Iowa. One of the people that thought she wasn't going to last in the league like, coming out uh, last year. People were like, oh, you're being me, whatever. And kudos to her. She had to change some things to get into the league. And, that's, and, that's and, the and that was an all-world player on the college level. Yes, it was. But, again, it's just coming from, like you said, we, we've been covering the league with five, six years. Things are different on that level and seeing the stuff that's in there. Like, man, people got to go into that league and deal with John Quill Joneses. How many of y'all seen one of those <laughs> in three, four years in college? Alyssa you know, Thomas. like, not even going to talk about bully, the bully, Alyssa Thomas. You, you got grinders down there. Courtney Williams, Mike <laughs> Wade, man. She she like Lou Whip, just 25. Just, Dude, easy. Yeah, just and, and, that's, and that's the thing is, um, you know, especially at the guard position, like we're in the NBA to, to respect the guard position. If you can't defend, man, it's your food out there. Yeah, like think about it. Breonna Jones. Katie Lou, that Maryland game we went to that yes. sold out Xfinity, yes. and we was there. Mm-hmm. Both of them were all world. Yep. Brianna Jones had Gino shook at the game. Yep. Like, Lord, if she yeah, wasn't in foul show, we would have lost. He said that. He I was stressed. Proudly, I would proudly. If she wasn't fouled, they could not do nothing with her. At all. First two, three years in her career, she's barely getting minutes. She's playing behind two all pro, all WNBA fours. Mm-hmm. It's, it's tough. No, she just had 58 and 17 overseas the other day. But it's somebody like trying to work hard to get more than eight to ten minutes a game. It's that tough. It's real. Like, like we just want to convey to you how tough it is. It's not hate anything else. Just being real. Like this is why some of those players that, and this is also why you see some players that didn't have the quote unquote type of success they had on a college level. They're fine on the next level. Like even when I watch Oregon play, I don't think she's the most talented player. I think the pro that the person that projects to the pros the best is a. Uh, the junior dish, so that's just the clay. Yeah, I yep. think she's the one that's, yeah. You she, were saying she, that the other day, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. She's more of the type of thing that's been funneling into the league. Because mm-hmm. she has a lot of ways to be successful, mm-hmm. whereas, you know, I mean, we're going to have to see, man. You know what I mean? She could, hey, she come in, gang bus is going to work. Hey, more power too, but I don't know, man. <laughs> it's going to hey, be no, tough. No, no, no ladies feisty up there, man. It's different. We just not used to seeing it when you watch the league and they go going to WBA. You like, ah. Uh, you like, oh my, oh man, they Especially about to square up. Watch, <laughs> we watch no defense for 89 games of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, I'm including yeah. a couple first round of playoffs. I said it. Yeah. 89 games. I was like, you know, they did a couple yeah. more on that. No, no, right I, I, I was counting those. <laughs> but you right though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm not even being petty, just honest. Like, <laughs> what, conference championship? Start seeing stops and things of that nature. Yeah. Not being funny, because you usually got two teams that ain't played defense all year that just take turns taking bad shots and somebody else scores the other. And then eventually, you know, it thins out the herd a little bit, and you got the guys that stop people for most of the year against folks that ain't seen nothing like this for most of the year. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's what it is. But we want to thank you guys, man, 150 episodes. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Continued, uh, continued support. We truly appreciate it. Um, now we're going to see you guys next week, same time, same place. Got some things coming. This oh, is man. Tell you. Like, we got some things coming. Like, Studio 202 is not playing. And, uh, man, we're going to try to take every advantage of every bit of it coming up. Coming. But, uh, yeah, we'll see y'all guys next week. Same place, same time. Get over to finestbag.com, mymonosports.com, as always.